All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to A Message of Hope. My name is Monet Souza, and today I'm joined with Brother Dominic, and we are going to be talking about woundedness. But before we get started, Brother, can you open us up in a prayer? Absolutely, Monet. All right, let's start as we start all of prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, we, your beloved ones, your sons and daughters, present ourselves to you this day. We come to you with our anxieties, our fears, but also our joys and our consolations. We come to you with all that we are, with our very selves open and receptive to your promptings. And in a special way, we bring to you those places of hurt, those places of woundedness and brokenness that we sometimes don't know how to hand over to you the places which may seem ugly, which may seem unworthy of being seen by you or by others. We ask you to take these things that we fear to show you, the parts of ourselves which we're unable to look at, and we ask you to send that Holy Spirit, the fresh breath of your life, into those darkened places of our heart. Press your healing hands to our wounds and give us what we seek, your very self. Fill our holes with your presence. May us whole and ready to serve you make us holy so that with all your saints may we, we may rest with you in that joy which is heaven we ask this in the name of our wounded healer and our lord jesus christ amen, amen. in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. that's a beautiful prayer brother thank you so you are Probably most well known. If anyone knows you at all, they might know you as <laughs> Brother Dominic. That can be found on Instagram. They might know you as a Dominican friar. Um, yeah. Maybe some people have met you at Seek, like myself. I'm finally being able to meet you in person. But with all things to be said, you are also someone who I deeply admire with your faith. Um, you know, even through a screen, it is so evident when someone is close to their faith, close to our mother, um, close to our Lord. And I definitely see that in you. But of course, I don't know everything about you. Can you just formally introduce yourself to those who are watching? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that, like over the top, wonderfully warm. I got to live up to that uh, introduction now. Um, but so my name is Brother Dominic. I'm a Dominican friar. And God willing, in August, I'll make solemn vows for life. Um, so I've been in the order for about four years now. Um, before that, you know, I, I was a journalism major from Indiana um, that I fully expected to go into the journalism world. Uh, and instead, the Lord had very different plans, preaching a different message, preaching a different truth. Um, but, you know, it actually really starts with my family, like not to go into all of the story, but we weren't Catholic originally. Actually, my whole family, we were Baptist originally. Um, but my mom and my dad were like, hey, Catholic school is pretty good, right? And so they sent us to the local parish school, St. Vincent de Paul. And it was there that my brother and I start coming home with questions, you know, because we're going to mass, we have religion class. And my parents are concerned. They're like, did we get our kids into a cult? Um, and, and so they start looking into it. And among other things, they read Scott Hahn's Rome Sweet Home. Um, and I really started my, my dad and my mom's journey back, uh, into the church in the first place. And then, you know, my dad comes to my mom and he's like, Noel, I think this Catholicism thing might be true. I think we need to look into it more. And she says, I figured that out a month ago. Where were you? I've been praying. Um, and so that really, then my whole family, my mom, my dad, my brother, myself, and then my dad's parents also, um, we all came into the church together. So my entry into the faith is really a family affair, if you will. Um, and from then, it's been basically just how to be involved in this family that we've chosen. Uh, and so that was altar serving. That was um, parish youth group. That was the Newman Center at Indiana University, where, where I met the Dominicans. Here we are. Praise God, brother. I did not see this is why I let people introduce themselves because I only know like a small <laughs> little sliver of who the, who everyone is that I interview, but that is a beautiful story. Um, yeah, I would just love to know, you know, of course, you're going from 
one one faith to another you're having that conversion with your family um you know oftentimes i talk to a lot of people who are converts to the faith uh, to the catholic faith and they they immediately begin to see how broken the catholic church is and they're like oh <laughs> I just converted to like, I know I converted to yes. the fullness of the the truth, fullness of the faith, but this is what I'm, this is what I'm getting. So I would love to see how this kind of is an entryway to, to the topic again of, of woundedness. Um, and we know that we are all stained by sin by our first parents, Adam and Eve, but oftentimes we see the woundedness of our faith, of the church, of, uh, you know, our shepherds, of the lay people, what yeah how has this topic of woundedness really you know kept with you maybe as you entered into the church or right now currently in the season of your life where does this term and this reality kind of stand with you now right no i think again if you want if there's one uh doctrine of the faith of, of catholicism and christianity that we don't really we don't need revelation to figure out it's sin the world is messed up right like I think we could all look at the world and say, I, this is not what I think it should be. Um, and and the, in this sphere of this brokenness, something's wrong. And yet we also know something's right, something called the gospel, something called our Lord Jesus. Um, I think for me, what's really this has come into play, this woundedness, this real confrontation with like where our sin gets rooted and planted has come, especially for me now in the religious life as I think about solemn vows, um, you know, I want, I have, I have come to this, I've discerned this and God has continually called me to this. And at the same time, I know how utterly imperfect I am. Uh, Dominicans have a wonderful thing we say when we uh, make our vows for the first time, you're asked, what do you seek? And we have a very short thing, which is very unusual for Dominicans. We talk a lot and it's God's mercy and yours. God's mercy and yours. That's what I seek. And I think in this past year, especially, I've really had to struggle with, I I do need mercy. Um, I think, and not just mercy in a general way, but mercy in a particular way. There are places in my heart that that are just broken, that just hurt. And I want the Lord to come through in a drive-through kind of way and snap his fingers and order up healing number five and instead he comes and he sits with me on the bench of my own brokenness right um he sits with me in the place of my sin and it's like lord like i don't know if i can be your minister like i don't know if i can do this i can be your priest right because i i struggle with anger or resentment i struggle with just like the constant comparison or perfectionism right like and so then i busy myself with everything under the sun to try and hide from that woundedness. And he's just like, my son, sit down. Sit down and listen to what I'm telling you. Like, and so I think for me, it's just that, I mean, that's kind of the beginning of it really. And I was, I've been so struck by this need for particular mercy. Uh, the Lord needs to press his hands to my particular wound. And like, if I can't name my particular wound, if I can't articulate it, you know, then how can I, how can I really walk with people in their own wounds? You know, even as you were talking, brother, you know, the immediately, like right before you said that, with um, touching, like you know, even the Lord's wounds, I had the imagery of doubting Thomas going up to Christ and Christ saying, like, touch my wounds, like I want you to like come close mm -hmm. to me. And even though it's Thomas who's touching the wounds of Christ, I really believe it's an invitation for the Lord to say you can also be the one who's wounded and allow me to come in touch and to heal and to, to be there in, in those physical wounds, those mental, those emotional wounds. Um, because again, Christ is the one who sets the example for us to then follow. And if he can so willingly share those, those innermost parts of him and vulnerable parts of him, he wants us to do the same in our life for the Lord to enter into, but that's easier said than done, which you already are alluding to. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it is so hard. And I would love to know, you know, what started to become that turning point. Cause like, obviously 
not everyone gets, you know, into the world and they're like, all right, Lord, this is everything I'm going through. You know, what, how can we start to open ourselves or what were the ways that you began to allow the Lord to really sit there and you just be still and let him see what you're, you're wounded by or struggling with? Yeah. You know, I think it, this past summer I was working as a missionary in Wisconsin doing youth ministry, working with high school and middle schoolers, wonderful time, but like every week, a new place, a basically a 15 hour day every day. I mean, it was, and like finding the time for my contemplative life as a religious, uh, very difficult. And in that, like, I also had, um, just some bodily, some health stuff come up that just like some intestinal stuff that just really was challenging to me. And and my ministry. And I, I realized, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving my best. I'm not giving my best. You know, like if I'm not giving first fruits to the Lord and to the Lord's people, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing what I'm called to do at all. Um, and so for me, it was kind of that realization, like I'm coming here on empty every day and the people of God do not deserve mediocrity. The people of God are, are like if I'm going to serve them, they I need to serve them with my best. And mediocrity is certainly not that. And it's not what we're called to. We're not called to mediocrity. Um, we're not called to function only in this kind of, well, this is as good as it gets. No, the Lord wants so much more for us. So that that experience on mission and really seeing just how much I was unable to give. Uh, and just to be, I felt so torn in so many different directions, not just then, but even before that, you know, when I was at Indiana university as an undergrad, you're, you're going to, you're going to laugh at me. I was president of the Newman center. I was grand knight of the Knights of Columbus. I was an editor at the, at the student newspaper. I was on parish council and I was leading a Bible study. You was I like doing me. any of them well? They only had parts of you. That's what it was. Exactly. You know, and if I can't give my whole self, if I can't go 100% in for the Lord and for his people, like, I'm not doing it right. I'm not, I'm not ready to do it right. You know, so it's just, it's been a gradual process. I think it's taken me years. It's taken me four years of formation to be able to articulate this. And a part of it too is like finding in the church today, we're really blessed, like, Dr. Bob Schutz, Sister Miriam, if you remember, like, seek, like, yeah. uh, talk about people who know what it means to have, like, the Lord to touch their wounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember reading Be Healed by Bob Schutz, and I was just, like, struck by how he named exactly some of the places of deepest vulnerability. Like, I didn't feel secure. I didn't feel like I could be loved just because I'm Dominic. Or brother dot like I thought I needed to do a thousand things in order to be loved by the Lord, mm -hmm. and that is just not the case. Even there's um, what you're making me think of is the skewed way we think of certain people in our lives, and then we oftentimes translate that to God, um, and how oftentimes when we do pour out our weaknesses and we do almost unveil what we're struggling with. And the person in front of us is not receiving us well in that, or maybe they're dig they do see the wound and then they just dig into it out of like spite or out of jealousy or out of anger or whatever it is towards us. And sometimes we think, well, God, if that person who's supposed to have you living within them did that to me, then of, of course, we oftentimes naturally translate that to God will, won't you like rub salt in my, in my wound and make mm -hmm. me feel that shame and that hurt in that. Um, but of course that is not true, but how do we begin to not translate the negative receptivity? Someone welcomes us in and just keep that too. That is human weakness. That is not how God will, will accept our woundedness. How do we draw the distinction? This, this is the trouble, right? Cause our traumas, they, they put us like whether it's like a real like a loss like a death or something or it's just like we didn't receive love in the pro proper way both of these are traumas right mm -hmm. like these set us up in in like this whole framework of kind of like spiraling downward and i think a big part of it is, is one you know we we need to find that first of all we need to be open and receptive to the people who maybe we do trust right like who sits at our table right like who sits at our own like 
imagine the banquet table of your heart, like the last supper, if you will. Like who sits at your at your table? Do you trust them? Do you do you break bread with them? Like, are these the people you can share yourself with? And are they the people who can receive you? Our greatest desire is to be loved most fully and to love others most fully ourselves. Like that's vocation right there. Mm -hmm. um, but because we weren't received, then we have this whole this whole thing. And I think a part of it too is this is where scripture comes in handy. You know, <laughs> strange, I know. Scripture <laughs> is is an answer here, but it is, it is yeah. an answer, my friends. Like we look at it, the Lord is faithful, though we are faithless. Mm -hmm. The Lord always looks after his people. If we look at the pair, like the prodigal son, I mean, could I name a better parable for us? That's like true. that image is is our life over and over again. And it's given to us in scripture so that we might read it. The church does it every like in the cycle in the liturgical calendar. We get it all the time because this is what we need. So I think scripture is a big way of getting out of it in one sense and just slowly internalizing that, reflecting how has God provided for me? You know, it's like this is my this is my image and then I'll I'll stop talking a little bit, you know, but like your father ever threw you up in the air as a kid, right? Like mm -hmm. and you're like first time maybe as a kid you were pretty scared. You know, I know I know I was like my dad would throw me in the pool. Like it was a great time, but like it take you have to learn to trust, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have a relationship, and then after the first time, and it turns out, oh, this worked out. Hey, Dad, can we do it again? But we need that memory, we need that experience of not being let down, of someone treating our our sacred our sacred spaces of our heart with reverence, of taking their shoes off, and not just walking through and crushing everything and that also takes time with you know of course i love the imagery of like knowing who's sitting at your table but if jesus also does not have a place at that table with you then it's going to be really hard to reverse the lies that may be spoken to you because you know for myself this is something i'm working on for lent of exactly what you're saying brother with you know, where you were having those five different roles um, when you were in your undergrad, like that's still me. I had five. I've got down to three. I'm like, this is good. Like the Lord's still asking for more. Um, so I'm trying really hard to do um, time and adoration for Lent on a regular basis because we can spend time with our friends all we want and our family all we want, but the ultimate healing comes time, comes with time in prayer before the Lord most especially in adoration. Um, and that will bring so much healing and so oh, much yeah. truth because you're before the one who loves you the most. Like it comes back to, like yeah. you've been saying, it's all about who's deeply loving you best and consistently it's God, the father. Absolutely. And the divine radiation of love. I like, the, I always like it's radiation, you know, Carlo Acutis like would like said that when we sit out under the sun, we get a tan. When we sit in front of the Eucharist, we become holy. You know, the radiation from the Eucharist, the radiation from our lives becoming what we are adoring and receiving. Like, but, you know, sometimes that hurts. The change hurts. It's like I have a number of friends I, who are going through cancer treatments right now or who have. Um, and a lot of that's chemotherapy, among other things. And that it hurts. It is exhausting. It is it is terrible. You know, that radiation can hurt and it can feel like we're making things worse at times. And sometimes that's what it can feel like to try and grow in the spiritual life. It can feel like it's hurting. It can feel like it's really painful to like show this place and like maybe it won't be received. We risk that, right? Um, but at the same time, this is the way that the cancer of sin, the cancers of woundedness in our life can be can be rooted out, can be start, and then we can start to plant the tree of life, Jesus Christ in our own hearts, you know? Yes. There's, I know there's like so much on this topic that we could just talk for hours about, but I want to make sure that like we're hitting uh, crucial terms and points. The one that I would love to start moving into brother is wounded healer. Um, and what this could look like, because Oftentimes, myself included, whether it's going into a relationship, a friendship, a new workplace, wherever, 
um, vocation, we think I must be completely perfect and everything I've ever gone through must be all tied up with a pretty bow. And then I can enter into like whatever the Lord has in store for me, but that is not the case. Um, so I obviously could speak to wounded healer, but I would love to know from a religious perspective first, um, you know, what maybe this term means to you and how it can be lived out within our faith. Yeah, I think this is a great, I love this question. You know, I read in the novitiate my first year in the order, I read Henry Nowen's book, Wounded Healer. Um, and that has put me on a certain trajectory ever since. And I think what he articulates there is so good. You know, religious, our goal, well, for Dominicans in particular, it's to preach and teach for the salvation of souls. That's that, that's our mission. Not, not a small one, I know, but uh, there we are. And in that, though, like people listen more willingly to to witnesses than just teachers. And the just and like our preaching begins with our life as well. And so, you know, I think a question that emerges for me is, you know, if I'm going to preach about how Jesus's presence changes everything, how the gospel changes everything. Has it really changed my life? You know, I think this wounded healer, it means being again, if I need to be able to articulate my wound my places of hurt, the places where I was not loved as I needed to be loved, the places where, you know, it, and again, the name it and not to be ashamed of it and say, well, I know other people have suffered more, or I know that this is not like a real, tr no, it hurts. It's a wound in your life. It's real. And unless you acknowledge its realness, you can't let the spirit in to really make it whole again, to really make you whole again. And the spirit does that while we're on mission. This is the amazing thing. As we begin to let the Lord walk with us through our own wounds, through the geography of our hearts, you know, with the canyons and the cracks and the places of darkness, we, we gain other people on the journey with us who are walking through their own hearts, walking through the, the geography of their own lives. But because we've been walking with the spirit, because we've been walking with our father, our hand in his hand, we can start to create a map for all of us. I think that's the goal of religious. I think if we if we think our religious or our priests are perfect, we're going to be disappointed. I think the abuse scandal has done that to us. I think I think we have been humbled, and I think we I I think it is a in that sense a good thing that we have been humbled because we are not perfect, and that is the exact kind of mentality one needs to enter into the desert to let the Lord walk with us and show us the geography of our hearts and then to gather others in as we journey towards that destination of the father's heart. Yeah, that's well said, brother. Even something that I would love to add as well, um, just from a perspective that I gained, as I was telling you a little bit before starting the episode is I was at Franciscan university. The household I was in was daughters of Zion and the whole trajectory of the household was obviously following, following after Our Lady, First Daughter of Zion, but also really leaning into um, praise, being a wounded healer, and then the mercy of, of our Lord. And we leaned into St. Faustina quite a bit um, in the time frame that you're a, a sister in this household. So with wounded healer, when that came up, something that really brought perspective and also taught prudence within um, this group of women that I was walking with is if it still hurts to touch the wound and like, even with the like imagery, like say you got a cut um, and you know, like obviously the band aid's still on it. And each time you try to like open it up, like it's still like very raw yeah. and you're like touching it. And you're like, why are you still, still touching that? Like, it's clearly still like bleeding or like healing. Don't, you don't like be prudent on who or what you share that struggle with like if that's something that still needs to stay between you and the lord still needs to stay between you and that person you're seeking healing from within the confessional like keep it there but if you can look and you know like from when i was a little kid like i have scars all over me like from the like sports i played like i you can see like we all have scars if you can poke at something or speak to something that happened or that you've struggled with in your life and it like 
yeah, like, you know, that you've been wounded there or whatever it may be, but you can speak from a place of, I can speak to this because I've been healed from this. Um, and that is usually a good rule of thumb that these women were walking us through of, this is when you know the prudence of what to share in which you have struggled with or struggling with. So I'd love to know is like, cause that's just the place out of being a wounded healer that I've heard of, like, obviously not pretending you have it all together, but knowing like, if you're going through something still you're healing yeah. from, don't share with everyone. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think, please. Yeah. Do not think that when I like, well, like our wounds are like part of the geography, part of like what gets us places like that. You need to share everything with it. Like, again, who's at your table? Who do you trust? Who has earned a right to the truth that rests your heart? You know, like the Lord is certainly there, but others, who have we let in? Who should we let in? Not everyone. I think for me, too, a thing to just say to to add to this, too, is when we have a scar, you know, I think sometimes we can think these mar us, these make us ugly, you know. Um, but at the same time, they make us utterly unique. And they and like there is. What does Paul say? He says that my that the Lord's grace is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes our wounds can be inverted by the Lord. They can be turned inside out and our scar becomes a mark of real glory, a mark of like the, of a wonderful presence of grace. So maybe. What the what our enemy, the devil, has done, and maybe what our own sin has done, is take this place of woundedness and it's made it a place of isolation for us. You know, think of someone who struggles perhaps with pornography or with lust, you know, that I mean is so prevalent in our culture today. And but think it but well, what does the inversion of that look like? It begins to look like a real care, a real concern for the other person, a concern not because of what they give you, but a real love, a real charity. Think of the person who is always angry and resentful. How can they build up? How can they how can the Lord invert that if we let him? Our wounds aren't just scars that we have to live with. They're places where the Lord's power reigns. If we let him, the Lord sets up his throne in our woundedness that's where he wants to reign from and so it's like yeah don't if a wound's still bleeding if he hasn't set up his throne there don't show it but if he has like let that lamp shine brightly don't hide it under a bushel basket amen well brother again like i said there's so much more to still cover with this one we might have to do like a two-part episode or something but I would love to just make sure that those who are watching are really following uh, what, what has been said. So to just start presenting some useful tools for people to go home with, because the whole point of these episodes are, I pray that someone watches and then they want to, to leave this YouTube platform, this YouTube app and do something to amend their life or to better their relationship with the Lord. Um, a few things that you mentioned right off the bat to just reiterate is um, the importance of scripture and really reminding ourselves that the, the word of God is living and effective. Like it's not just words on a page. Like it can really strike our heart and penetrate our heart in beautiful ways. If we sit with scripture, um, you know, it's just going to be beautiful how the Lord can wash over his truth over us. Something that you kept saying that makes me think of an acronym that I got taught um, actually by my coworker, who's the youth minister right here at the parish is RIM relationship identity mission identity mission yeah yeah so just like recognizing that's usually the the format of mm -hmm. yeah just that order and how order can really bring about truth and goodness of who we are in the eyes of the father is there anything else that you mm -hmm. would like to mention that people can kind of go home with yeah yeah so you know i think one we need to remember the sacrifice here the sacraments are medicine they are for healing in particular confession um i hope we're going to confession regularly, everyone but you know even if we're not to trust in the lord's mercy to put ourselves out there and to really ask lord i need your gentleness here and in that view, when we make our examine i think there's something important we can do we often confess this the fruits we confess gossip or resentment or judgment and good please go confess those but but what is at the root of those? You know, the devil has planted woundedness, a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
and we are sure we know what is good and what is evil and we do not know i don't know we're relying on ourselves so often so how do we track those down where does this wound come from why did i why do i fall into gossip is it because i really have this deep seated wound of maybe i don't feel loved myself and so i break other people down because i'm insecure um because i didn't get love as a when i was younger so like don't just confess the fruits but let's cut the roots of the tree in our heart and really invite the Lord to help us chop that off. Because it's not that the sacrament of confession's not efficacious otherwise, but like our hearts, we need to open them wide to the Lord. The more we open our hearts to him, the more discernment and more self-knowledge we have, the more the Lord can work his grace in us. St. Catherine teaches us this. She's my bossy older sister in the spiritual life. But the more self-knowledge we have, the more the Lord can enter into our lives. So I would just invite you to that examine to really trace the fruits of your sins, maybe. Yeah. And even there's a beauty too of having a frequent confessor. Like I've had the same priest hear my confession for the past, I think two years now. And there is like, yes, there is the seal of confession. It's not like he's saying to me, oh, Monet, I remember how two weeks ago you confessed X, Y, and Z, but there is the he's he is walking with me in each confession that I have mm-hmm. with him where he can um maybe give me some uh, a penance or something to really just shape and change my life so I don't feel like I'm staying within that same sin and they priests really can walk with us well or even spiritual directors um and as you mentioned brother just the beauty of in addition to reading scripture just uh you know, reading from Bob Schutz, Sister Miriam, James Highland, and these wonderful Catholics who are within our sphere and within our grasp of looking into even their resources to help us um, really live out of this yeah. place of wounded healer. Yeah. And I'd say finally, you know, just one last little thing is just to say, hey, come Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, that at the end of the day, this is the simplest prayer. And just the desire to have God enter into our lives is a great prayer. And so come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, and enkindle in our hearts the fire of your love. You know, the fire that burns up anything that is not what God desires for us. Yeah. Amen. Well, brother, we are just about out of time, uh, sadly, <laughs> but... Uh, I'll be sure for everyone who's watching that I leave all the resources that we discussed in the description below. Um, and then also I can leave, if it's okay with you, brother, your social media uh, handle on Instagram. So if anyone yeah, wants sure. to follow and just continue to receive so much goodness that you speak out of, and please know that we will be praying for you um, for this coming August in your, in your vocation. Thank you. You'll be getting an invitation. Don't worry. Yes. I was going to wonder. I was wondering just a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. I'll take care of it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, thank you for having me, Monet. You're very welcome. And everyone, God bless you. Please know of our prayers and we'll see you again next time. God bless.